Boy, aren't we praying for Israel. Amen. Jesus. When I got the call yesterday morning early, somebody called and woke me up. And when I saw it, I was just sick. Oh, my goodness. I, I know that you have saw some of the pictures we've saw, but they killed one Jewish lady, and they tied her to chains on the back of a car and was pulling her through the streets of Gaza. And um, mothers killed and their children killed, elderly killed. They said this morning right before I came to church that the death toll now of those murdered is up to over 650 people. It's up from yesterday. So there's no telling how many people they're going to find that has been killed because they had the demolition of so many buildings through bombings. But I want to talk to you for a little bit today about what I think is going on in Israel. You know, I always try to stay in contact with Israel and talk about it when things happen there. But the thing that's on my mind and has been on my mind now for some weeks is the Saudi Arabia-Israeli peace deal. Last month, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu announced that Israel was on the cusp of signing a historic peace deal with Saudi Arabia. And he was excited about it. He even was standing there talking, holding a microphone, talking about how the Middle East is going to be changed with this peace deal between Saudi Arabia and Israel. And he used the word peace so much in just a few sentences, in just a few paragraphs, I was really surprised to hear that he used peace so much. And it just was sort of like a red flag went up in my mind. And he was almost giddy at the seeming peace deal that he was about to enter into with them. But then I read that Saudi Arabia was requiring that Israel give up East Jerusalem to the Palestinians in order for the deal to go through. When I heard that, I said, oh my God. The Bible says in Thessalonians, it says, for when they say peace and safety, then sudden, sudden destruction shall come upon them. And so Israel was willing evidently for the talks to go as far as they did and Prime Minister Netanyahu was willing to go and try to secure this peace deal as part of his legacy for Israel. But they did require that the Palestinian state have a capital in East Jerusalem. And I began to look back and see some things that I had preached through the years in my notes and I was looking at Jerusalem, and I just want to tell you a few things about Jerusalem that I want to remind everybody, and I want to speak it into your hearing. Jerusalem has a prophetic destiny, and the Bible says pray for the peace of Jerusalem. It never said pray for the peace of Los Angeles. It never said pray for the peace of Moscow or the peace of Washington. It said pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Jerusalem is known as the city of David, the city of God, city of Judah, city of joy, the city of peace, the city of praise, the city of righteousness, the city of the great king, the city of the Lord, the city of truth, the faithful city, the gate of my people, the green olive tree, the holy city, the holy mountain, the throne of the Lord, and Zion. And in Psalms 132 and verses 13 through 14, King James, it says, The Lord has chosen Zion. He has desired it for his habitation, for God's habitation. And he said, This will be my rest forever. Here I will dwell, for I have desired it. Obadiah said, But upon Mount Zion shall be deliverance, and there shall be holiness, and the house of Jacob shall possess their possessions. In Chronicles, it says, I have chosen Jerusalem that my name might be there. And I have chosen David to be over my people, Israel. Zechariah said, 
Thus saith the Lord, I am returned unto Zion, and I will dwell in the midst of Jerusalem. And Jerusalem shall be called a city of truth and the mountain of the Lord of hosts, the holy mountain. Psalms 48 says, as we have heard, so have we seen in the city of the Lord of hosts, in the city of our God, God will establish it forever. I want to emphasize, the Bible says that God will establish it forever. Selah. God said to Abraham in Genesis 17, I will establish my covenant between me and thee and thy seed after thee and their generations for an everlasting covenant to be a God unto thee and to thy seed after thee. And I will give unto thee and unto thy seed after thee the land wherein you are a stranger, all the land of Canaan for an everlasting possession, and I will be their God. <clears throat> I remember when President Bush required, in order to get a peace deal, he entered into a, was entering into a peace deal, and he got the brilliant idea that he was going to require Gaza, which was part of Israel. He required that that was going to be given over to the Palestinians. And whenever he required that, he surrendered Gaza. to the Palestinians and that's where Hamas came in and made Gaza their devilish headquarters and I said back then publicly like I'm doing right now I said that Gaza will become a place where they'll lob rockets into Israel consistently it will be a place that will be a nest for terrorists and then when President Bush made Israel give up the coastal strip, the Gaza Strip, Israel was removing Jews because they didn't want to leave their homes. They didn't want to leave their synagogues. That was their home. That was their Jewish home. And the word was sent out that the troops was going to be coming in and removing people from their dwelling places. And Israel was removing Jews, and it showed it on camera from their homes and their synagogues forcing them to leave against their will. And just a matter of days later, a hurricane hit America, and it's called Katrina, and it hit New Orleans, and a place where it hit caused all the damage was a place called the West Bank. And it was the city, it was the center of the city that flooded the Fifth Ward, and carnage in the West Bank of New Orleans was unbelievable. And they were removing people from their homes in New Orleans just like they were doing a few days earlier in Gaza because the president required it. And they were removing people from their businesses in New Orleans by helicopter just as they were in Gaza a few days before. The one thing I want to make clear and I have tried to emphasize this through the years, you do not fool with Jerusalem. You do not. I don't, uh, I don't really care that you don't like me saying that. It doesn't bother me whatsoever in the least. I love you, but if you're worried and bothered with that, that don't bother me at all because I know I'm on the side of Scripture, and I know I'm on God's side. But after President Bush required that, and the Prime Minister required that they leave their homes and their synagogues, and then after the hurricane hit in New Orleans and did all the damage, I think I have always believed it. You might not believe it, but I believe it. I believe that it was a direct result of what happened in New Orleans, of what they required the Jews to leave and to give up land for peace. And President Bush never recovered from that. Anytime he made a speech after that, he stammered and stammered and stumbled and stammered. He couldn't even hardly make a speech. And I loved him and I prayed for him and I still love him to this day. I have a soft spot in my heart for him, but he was dead wrong. And if I'd ever had an opportunity to meet him and to talk to him, I'd just, at that time I'd have said, President Bush, don't touch it. You're going to make a mistake if you do. 
And so he became a pathetic leader in the remaining days. He hobbled through the rest of his administration and he looked humiliated and he was humiliated. He didn't even attend the Republican convention as they were getting ready to elect another president. He had to go out of office after eight years and they elected a Democrat, Obama, took over the presidency. Right now in the state of America, America is in dire straits. I heard um, Prime Minister Netanyahu say yesterday, he said, at a time when I really need America, he said, I'm having to go this alone because he said America is in such turmoil. I can't, I don't have much support. And that means with all this going on in the Middle East, there's no speaker to rally the Democrats and Republicans to come up with a resolution supporting Israel. There's no speaker to rally the troops, both sides of the aisle, and pledge money to Israel for their war, to give parts to the Iron Dome to replace the Iron Dome because the Iron Dome was overloaded with all the missiles that came in so quickly. They need more Iron Domes besides that one. It was overloaded, and many missiles got through and killed a lot of Jews. So we, we're not even able to get the funds together that would pass Congress because we don't have a speaker to organize that kind of legislation. So our nation is in disgusting disarray and there's no end in sight. And let me say that Israel right now needs a strong America like they have never needed a strong America. And they need, and they're not going to get it right now, but they need a strong president like they've never needed a strong United States president. They need uh, leadership in Washington that will not just give verbal support, but will stand stalwart with them shoulder to shoulder. At a time when they need us, America is absolutely coming unraveled. We have a sea of sexual confusion and gender identity going on in this country. A border crisis that's allowing terrorists and criminals to enter with no restrictions. What happened in Israel, they said that there was a security failure and people were coming in on motorcycles by air gliders and by the water. They said it was a major failure of security and they said over 3,000 terrorists has entered Israel and many of them are still there. Well, I've got news for you. In America, we've got millions of terrorists that's entered us because of the open border. And it is so unbelievable to many people in this nation, especially me, that we have had millions of people come in with an open border. And there's been Chinese, there's been Russians, there's been... All kinds of people come in that are terrorists, they are criminals, they are evil, and they have flooded this country, and you can't tell me that they're not going to plan something for the United States also. And we have nobody to blame but the President of the United States. <laughs> nobody to blame. We've got a nation right now that will not prosecute serious crimes, but they will prosecute the former president over absolutely nothing that he's done. They won't prosecute serious crimes. The Bible said in the last days that lawlessness would abound. And right now, as the world prepares for the advent of the Antichrist, society and culture is exactly getting prepared perfectly for the advent of the Antichrist, when the curtain comes up, he'll come out on the stage and he will come out before nations that are absolutely godless and lawless. And I'm trying to help you to understand the nations of the earth are getting ready for the Antichrist, but the church is getting ready for the advent of Jesus Christ. Can somebody shout amen? Hallelujah. Can you say amen? I'm getting ready to leave this world. 
I'm getting ready for the gates of pearl, like the song says. Serious crimes are not being prosecuted in America. It shows kids going into expensive stores and just taking whatever and breaking the glass. Security guards standing over watching it. And they're stealing thousands and thousands of inventory of just jewels and diamonds and all kinds of things and running out with it, not being stopped, getting in their cars. They left their car parked in the middle of the highway and they take off. I have never seen such a thing in my life. And just this last week I was praying about President Trump and it grieves me to see him being done so disrespectful and dishonorable. And uh, the, the crimes that he's being tried for in New York, it's a civil case. And that district attorney there has made up her mind long ago that she was going to prosecute him and put him in jail if she could. And to see him sitting in that court and having to undergo that kangaroo court and possibly have to pay $250 million in fines, you see that he's, there's an effort to destroy him. But the other night I was asleep and I was praying for President Trump and the Holy Spirit spoke to me and he said, I've got this. I've got this. And the Lord, the Lord spoke to me and he said, I said in my word, and Abraham, I told him that whoever blesses Israel, I will bless. Whoever curses Israel, I'll curse. I didn't say they had to be perfect to bless Israel. I just said, whosoever blesses Israel. And President Trump, when he was the president, did what no other president did. He moved the capital from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem. And he blessed Israel. And the Lord said, I haven't forgotten him. My eye is upon him, and I've got this. I'm going to take care of everything. Yeah. Amen. Now, that does not mean that I'm telling you to vote for President Trump for president, and it doesn't mean that I agree with everything about him because the Lord needs to get some soapy water and clean his mouth out. <laughs> but still, I believe because he's made some of the decisions that he's made about the church and about Israel, this is a demonic onslaught against him. And I believe that God's going to take care of him because he blessed Israel. You'll see it. You'll watch it and you'll see it. I believe it'll be a divine intervention. Now here again, I'm not saying, I'm not saying that this is a Republican thing or a Democrat thing. I'm saying it's a principled thing. And then also, I want to help you to understand that right now the Justice Department in America is absolutely being weaponized by head people, key leaders, against the citizens of this country and the leaders of this country. I saw just yesterday where the Justice Department now is asking the FBI to investigate anybody that is MAGA in this country. They're asking the FBI to investigate anybody that believes in the Make America Great Again because they feel like they're a threat because of January the 6th. It is an unusual time that we see Lady Justice that's supposed to be blindfolded. I've got news for you. Somebody tore that blindfold off. And Lady Justice now is being weaponized against its leaders and its citizens. Unparalleled corruption in government with both Democrats and Republicans. A media that is so biased, I'm nauseated to watch it anymore. I mean, any of it, all of it. I can't stand to watch any of it. No network news can I stand it anymore. I don't watch it. I watch the hunting channel. <laughs> A biased media with fake news that's constantly spewing bald-faced lies, and they know they're spewing them. Record levels of homelessness in America, in cities that once were beautiful and admired, but now has been mismanaged so badly that now there's thousands upon thousands upon thousands of people, many of them mental, and has been turned out of mental institutions on the streets, and they now are homeless on the streets of our once beautiful cities. 
in America, a divided America, has lost the ability to govern itself any longer. A Congress that can barely function, a Congress that can barely function to even keep the government open and funded long enough to function. Now, every few years, we face Democrats and Republicans that are so hard-headed, so insolent, so evil, and so unforgiving that they can't even get together to come up with a continuing resolution to keep the government funded to pay the military and to pay people that's necessary to pay, like the veterans and et cetera, and to keep all the government agencies funded. They can't even get together to get the money to pay to keep the government funded. We are in a total breakdown situation. When we jumped in and we began to fund Ukraine in the war with Russia, and we began to send major weapons there, missiles, tanks, many other things that they had to have to fight a successful battle against Russia. Is it any wonder now that Russia's fingerprints is all over the missiles that Hamas has been shooting at Israel? Not only Russia, but Iran. Iran and Russia have entered into an alliance just like Russia and China have entered into an alliance. Russia is all over the Middle East right now. Iran is supplying weapons. Iran is supplying money that America has given them billions of dollars. And I promise you some of that money has been used to try to destroy Israel. And I'll say this, they chant in the streets, death to Israel and death to America. If I was the president, they'd never get another dime. They would never get another dime. I'm not running for president, but if I was president, they'd never get another dime because you don't shout death to America and then us turn around and give them billions of dollars. They're using that for terrorism and they're using that to try to destroy Israel and America. So Iran and Russia are in an alliance. Hamas now claims attacks on Israel. They boldly say it that they were supplied financially and backed by their ally, Iran. And so this is the things that you're seeing happening, and it's happening quickly. These things have happened quickly, turned fast. Last thing I want to talk about real quickly is the Antichrist. Even though Israel desires peace and they cry for peace and safety, right now the stage is being set for peace to elude them at this particular time because no one is going to be able to bring peace except one, and he's coming on the scene soon, and he will be known as the Antichrist. And he will befriend Israel, and they will look to him. He will sign a peace accord with them. And they will believe that their Messiah has come and they will swallow it hook, line, and sinker. And when they sign that peace accord with him, that begins the time of Jacob's trouble, which is the tribulation period. So where's all this headed? It's all headed to nothing working. No government being able to put their hands on it and strong arm a peace deal. Governments can't do it, including our own. We're all impotent to bring about peace. There's no government that you can look to on the face of the earth right now that's not impotent. They're all impotent. They cannot bring a peace deal that will satisfy whatever has to be satisfied for the Middle East to return to normal. It's not going to return to normal. I'm just telling you that. It's too complex now. It's too far gone. It's waiting for the Antichrist to come up with the answers and the solutions. There's someone that's coming soon on the scene that will bring his peace plan and the world will hail it that he is a man of peace and it will be the Antichrist. I have wondered and wondered in the last number of months as I've seen America fall victim to 
this transgender lie and how that television now and the internet is increasingly full of sexual perversion. It's no longer being hidden anymore. It's right there for you. You can look at it. You can see it. It's filth. And I wondered with the filth, the flood of filth that's taking over this nation and the nations of the world, and I wondered when you look at the economies of the world and you look at the major democratic nations that's always been strong democratic bastions for the nation to look to, such as Great Britain, such as America, Germany, and many other places that's been bastions of democracy, including Israel. They're all in disarray, barely able to function, barely able to get a consensus to vote in the most normal legislation. It takes everything they got just to vote in something that's very normal and benign. They're not able to function. So as you take a look around, and I'm trying to help you to see what I'm talking about, if you look at every aspect of nations right now, including our own, we are in a situation to where these things should not surprise us. I want to leave you with this good news. I want to leave you with this, that God sees you. He sees your family. He knows who you are. He knows that you trust him. And the Bible says we have not been appointed to wrath. And I believe we're going to get out of here very, very soon. So, yes, I still believe in the rapture of the church. And yes, I do believe that the trumpet will sound and the dead in Christ will rise first and then we which are alive and remain will be caught up to meet the Lord in the air and so shall we ever be with the Lord. I believe that the rapture is right at the door. You may make fun of me for believing that, but I'm going to believe it till you see me going up. And when you see me going up, you're going to say, by crackies, that old preacher was right. But Jesus is coming back really soon and I know you believe that Let's stand and pray for Israel right now. Amen? Hallelujah. We're going to pray for Jerusalem, and we're going to pray for Israel. I need a microphone. We're going to pray for Israel today, and we're going to pray for Jerusalem. And Pam just texted me Friday, and she was supposed to leave out this week. She wanted me to pray for her today. She was supposed to leave out this week and leading the delegation to Israel. And so when all this happened, she, they're not flying into Israel right now, so they're with us today. But Pam is major, major voice and a major person in the life of Israel, and we're very blessed to have her and her husband, Dr. Haynes, in our church. And I'm going to ask her to lead us in prayer for Jerusalem. And every week, as you well know, when we receive the tithe and offerings, every week we wave our flags and we pray for the peace of Jerusalem every single week we have since we've been a church. That's one of the reasons that God is blessing this church. That's one of the reasons why I wanted you to come in here today and take this 20 minutes or, oh my goodness, 30 minutes and talk about uh, Israel and what's going on. But you know, if I was Israel, I would be comforted to know that Church of His Presence in Alabama was praying for me. And I believe that God hears our prayers and hears the saints of God praying all over this nation. You've got to remember, God still has a people. It's called the remnant, but God still has a people. Amen. And I want you to lift your voice up. We're all going to pray first together. And I want you to pray like you really mean it. Listen to me carefully. This is an emergency. This is a crisis. I want you to pray like you're praying into a crisis. I want you to lift your voice. I don't want you to be timid. And Pam is going to close in prayer for Jerusalem, and then I'll close in prayer for, uh, for Israel. So let's pray right now together. Come on, lift your voice up. Let's pray. Oh, Jesus. Jesus. Shetora Maranda Boyande. Hantoko. Correcto Coranda Babayanda Shite Cotopo do Bayanto. Come on, church. I want you to see those visions in your mind of what they've done to Israel. 
prayer can turn it. Prayer can turn it. In Jesus' mighty name, Lord, send revival to Israel. Send revival to Israel, Lord. Yeah, Father, we stand together as the body of Christ. And in the moment, we want to stand with what you have said. I will endue you with power from on high, from the city of our great king in Jerusalem. You spoke that word that is still echoing out through time and still echoing into this house and into our hearts. Endue us with power now as we pray. Father, we thank you for Jerusalem that is a city of our great king. We thank you that you have chosen Jerusalem as a city where you will dwell. And we lift up your word where you said a house divided can not stand. And so we are praying today as a united body that that house of Jerusalem not be divided in the name of Jesus. And I pray that you loose that prayer to continue on in our hearts. And God, we think of how you said, oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, would that I could gather you under my wing like a mother hen gathers her chicks. And so today we gather with you the city of Jerusalem. And as your body on earth, we speak peace to Jerusalem and its leaders in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Well, Father, we pray today for Prime Minister Netanyahu. I know that he is in a major storm. Father, I know that there's so many things that's going through his mind. And I know that the level of satanic attack against that man has got to be almost unbearable. And Lord, the level of satanic attack against Israel and the people of Israel, wondering what's coming next. But God, we ask in Jesus' name that you would abort and stop any further attacks. Lord, whatever the devil may have planned, we bring it to confusion and we speak that the Holy Spirit will take the fuse out of the bomb. In the mighty name of Jesus, we ask it. And Lord, we pray for the Knesset, that the Knesset would stand together with the Prime Minister, that they would put aside their differences, that they would repent to each other and stand in the gap for their nation like they never have. God made the church in America get rid of this replacement theology business and begin to pray for Israel and the move of God to come to Israel. Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray for every leader in Israel. Lord, we pray over the next few days that you would keep Israel and protect them. Lord, the Iron Dome is one thing, but the strong arm of the Lord is another thing. And I'm speaking in the name of Jesus that the strong right arm of the Lord will prevail against the attackers. Father, let us suddenly happen. Let a godly suddenly happen. We've seen an ungodly suddenly, but now, Lord, we ask for a a divine godly suddenly, suddenly to come and, and just turn this thing, Lord. We have got to have a turning, and you are the one that can do it, Lord. We pray for Jerusalem. We pray for Israel. Lord, we pray for the families that have suffered such horror and such shock at such a sudden attack and they're worried about their wives and their children and their mothers and their dads and their husbands and so many soldiers have been killed. Lord, so many families are grieving in Zion and we pray for them, Lord. Let a blanket 
of your glory and your presence just overshadow them, Lord, and keep them. We pray, Father. You tell us in your word to pray for them, and that's exactly what we're doing today as a church. Lord, we don't know what the next few days may hold. We don't know what the plans of the enemy are. We don't know where the next attack may come from. Maybe Hezbollah in Lebanon. Maybe there's going to be attacks in Iran. It may be that Israel may try to attack Iran. It may be that Iran has many things up their sleeve and this thing could get out of hand. But Lord, we know that we don't understand what tomorrow may hold, but we know who holds tomorrow. And we also know, Lord, that your hand is at the throttle of world events. And we know that everything is Father filtered. There's nothing that gets by you. Everything is Father filtered. But Lord, we look to you now in Jesus' name. Let your name somehow receive glory through all this. Lord, we're concerned not so much about Israel and Jerusalem, but we're concerned about your holy name. Lord, let your name receive glory. Let your word stand fast. Let it stand sure. And let Jerusalem stand sure. And Lord, we thank you today that although tomorrow may look unstable and tomorrow may look like it's going to be bleak and dark, but we know that everything is Father filtered and it's going to work out somehow for the glory of God. In Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. 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 Hallelujah.